Ariel Hawani in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, getting set for UFC 149 alongside Sean Jordan, who meets Czech Congo this Saturday night live on pay-per-view. And Sean, obviously, this is a, uh, a late replacement fight for you. You took the fight on short notice. What kind of shape were you in when you got the call from the UFC to replace Big Nog? Uh, you know what? I'm ready for this fight. Uh, I've been training hard for it. Uh, yeah, it was a little short notice, but you know, UFC knows I'll take fights on short notice. You know, I took a fight in two days for them. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I mean, I had a whole month of training, and uh, we worked hard. I had Travis Brown pushing me every day. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm good. I'm ready to go for this fight. Do you have a tongue ring? I do have a tongue what ring. What is going on over there? It's a childhood thing. I got it when I was young and just never came out. Can you take it out if you want to? Yeah, I take it out for fighting. Okay. But it just, I don't know, you've just thrown me off now with the tongue ring. Yeah. haven't seen one of those in a while. Yeah, no, maybe we should just not post it in interviews, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I see you have a couple of, it seems like you're a big fan of piercings. I was growing up. I don't wear any, that's the only one I wear now. Right, right. But yeah. What does was. it feel like? <laughs> like a hole in my tongue. Yeah. Is it true that you lose your taste buds? No. No. It didn't affect anything. Okay. When you train, do you take it out? Like Sometimes. It depends on what we're doing. Sparring days, I do. Okay. But grappling, I don't. Do you change the, uh, the like, earring not an earring the tongue ring i keep a metal one in so yeah, i don't break it right that's true um do you ever wear like in a wayne or something to intimidate your opponent just stick out the tongue <laughs> no man i don't I, i'm silly at the wayans anyway i'm not trying to intimidate anybody that's true that's true uh okay let's get back to the yeah, fight <laughs> i just you know i had to go on that tangent there because i saw something sort of trickling out of you your, your mouth out, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um check congo obviously this is a tough guy but he's coming off a loss you know he was knocked out by mark hunt do you consider him still to be one of the top heavyweights in the world, or do you think he's on the, you know, the the downside of his career here? Uh, you know, what? I think Chicano is definitely still one of the top heavyweights. Um, big, strong striker, um, and anybody can get knocked out in, in any fight with the heavyweights. Uh, we all hit hard, so um, yeah. And Mark Hunt hits hard, so it's it's no, it's not bad. You got knocked out with Mark Hunt. I mean, it just happened. You got caught. It's part of it. Uh, but I definitely think he's still very competitive, very, 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 very huge presence in the heavyweight division tall guy you know i think you i mean you're listed as six feet are you six feet by the way because probably like right when i wake up in the morning yeah. before i take too many steps yeah about six foot he, he's listed as around at around like six foot four six foot five how do you deal with someone who has that height advantage on you uh you know what it's one of those things when uh, you're a shorter fighter you have to kind of make, uh, make up space and close distance and get in tight uh to stay out of their range you know kind of or inside their range if you will um so it's kind of you handle height and um chicago does a pretty good job of circling out and moving around so We'll just have to see how, how it goes. Now, uh, since the last time we saw you in action, anything in particular that you've been working on? I mean, your career is relatively, you know, new. You're new to the UFC, one big win um, back in March against Ollie Thompson, as you mentioned. I mean, what what type of things have you been really focusing on in training, regardless of who you'd be fighting next? You know, a big thing I uh, I really do work hard on and try to develop more is, uh, is my stand-up game. Uh, I uh, work with Coach Mike Regaljohn, you know, three or four times a week and uh, get as much time as I can with him. Uh, just just to develop that part of my game uh i like to stand up and fight it doesn't mean it's pretty so i'm starting to work on it to get it you know get it a little more technical and better and and with him i mean what what do you think are his biggest weaknesses in his game that you're going to try to exploit on saturday night uh, you know what again check is a savvy veteran he's been around for a long time uh so he may have a few chinks in his armor or, or has had them in the past but I'm sure he knows he has to work on them and make those strengths or you know possible you know a possible weakness in those strengths. So I think he does you know a pretty good job of that. What's it like being on your first UFC pay per view? Uh, this is obviously a card that's had a lot of changes due to injuries. Some people down on it, but it's given you an opening here to fight a guy like Chuck Congo on pay per view. What's that experience like? So Absolutely, it's a, it's a huge experience for me. It's a, it's really exciting um, to be on a main card. My second fight in the UFC is huge. Um, it's going to help you. Know, a win over Chicago would be huge for my career. Uh, and the fact that I get to compete with them is awesome for me. It means I'm still moving up and I'm fighting better opponents each time. What do you say to the, the fans that are a little bit down on this card because of all the changes? Anything you'd like to say to them? Oh, you know, I'm upset a little bit too that Big Nog didn't get to fight. Yeah, I love watching that guy fight. Uh, but, you know, it was it was, uh, it was unfortunate for him, but it was good for me to get an opportunity to compete. Um, but, you know, the thing they don't understand is the UFC brought in a bunch of young guns that are up-and-comers that are hungry. They, they want to win. They want to fight. They want to beat the best guys out there. So, and that alone, they're going to have some great fights. By the way, you're a former LSU uh, Tiger fullback, right, in, uh, in the football days. Uh, what do you think of the new BCS playoff? You like that? You think that's good? Yeah, I think it's awesome. I think it would take away a little bit, uh, a little bit of controversy every year. Everyone's like, oh, why they get to go to play the, in the national championship, this and that. I think this, you know, this little playoff will probably help a little bit with that. Um, and it gives them another game to play, so that's pretty fun. Should be more than four teams, though, right? 
It should be, but that's just you know that's the way it is. It's hard. It's hard to get right. kids to play that long, that's you know, because they have to. You, know, you have school, and it's you're playing a whole semester already as it is. You know, then you're going to that second semester. Now you're running out of time for training for the following season. So it's just one of those things. You know, you have guys that graduate early too, so it's just, it's hard to do that way. All right. Well, thanks for the time. Good luck on Saturday night. Thanks, man. I appreciate it.